In this video, you're gonna learn how to do a simple sky replacement in the Fusion page of DaVinci Resolve. Here's what we're making. So here's before and after. So we have just a little bit more interesting sky being put in there. This is a really simple technique to spice up your footage with an otherwise kind of boring sky. My name's Casey. I help content creators make amazing things in Fusion. I also have a free video course, the Fusion Survival Guide, available in the description below. More on that later. Let's jump in, shall we? So there are a couple things that we need to do to make this work. One is this shot is moving a little bit. We have just a little bit of camera movement. So we're going to have to track the motion. And we're also going to have to key the real sky and put the fake sky in. So I have my original footage laid out here in the timeline and I'll just go down to the fusion page button and click on that. And that will open it up in fusion. One thing I'm definitely going to need is a fake sky. So I'll go up to my media pool and here's where you can import a still or a video. I have a video of this just kind of cloudy sky here, which is a lot more interesting than our just pure blue sky. And I'll grab this and drag that down into our node graph. And that makes a media in node. And I'll just hit F2 to rename that and we'll call this sky. And our original footage, I'll just call OG for original footage. I can close my media pool, and now we have the two main ingredients we need. First thing I'll do is take our sky, and we're going to merge this over our footage. I can do that by making a merge node, and I can quickly make a merge node by dragging the output from this node onto the output of my OG, my original footage, and things seem to be in order. Now I need to put this original footage, which I'll just bring up in our first viewer here by hitting 1 on the keyboard. I want to put our original footage over it. And I want to get rid of this blue sky just by keying it out, just like you would with a blue screen or a green screen. So how do we do that? Well, with nodes, we can actually put this footage in multiple different places in our kind of stack of elements here. And so I could do something like grab a merge node and just drag this in so that it's in between my sky and my media out. And I could take the output of my original footage and put that into the foreground. That's the green input of our merge too. And now it's going to be a little bit confusing, but if I move this around, we can see that this original footage is going into my merge one where the sky is being put over it. And it's also being piped into merge two and it's being put over the sky. So what we've essentially done is sandwiched our sky in between two copies of the original footage. Okay. I can organize this a little bit by holding alt and grabbing this line and I can kind of make a little elbow like this. And then I can just kind of organize this flow a little bit. I like to build my main stack of elements just kind of from left to right. And if I hit one for each of these, I have our original footage and then we have our sky on top of that. And then we have our original footage on top of that again. Okay. So now let's get rid of this blue sky in our original footage so that we can see the fake sky below it. We can do that with an effect called Delta Keyer. This is the main way to do kind of blue screen, green screen keying. And to quickly add a node, I can just click here in the empty space and then hit shift space bar. That'll bring up my select tool palette and then I can search for whatever I want. So if I type KEY, that'll bring up all the different keyers that we have. And what I want is the Delta keyer. This is just kind of the main keyer. I can also hit DK for a shortcut and then I'll hit add. That'll add a Delta keyer to our nodes here. And there are a few different inputs. The main one we're going to talk about is the yellow input. This is kind of the main footage that we're going to key. Okay. So I can take the output from our original footage, which is just going through these elbows here. And I can put that into the Delta keyer. And actually I'll get rid of this connection here. I take the output from the Delta keyer, that's the little gray square, and plug that into the green input for our merge. So now all we're doing is merging our footage over the sky and we are running it through a keyer, but we're not keying it yet. So let's go ahead and key it. I'll just grab this eyedropper and drag it over the sky like this. And we'll just kind of move this around until it feels like we have a pretty good key. And that looks pretty good. Now from afar, as we're zoomed out, we'll say, hey, psh, we're done, right? But there's a couple problems. One of them is if we zoom in here a little bit, we'll notice a couple things. One is that the edges here, there's kind of this little line around him and it just doesn't look very good. The other one is that down here, we can actually see some sky in this shadow because this shadow is sort of a similar color to our original sky. And so if I were to do something like select this merge that our sky is plugged into and turn the merge on and off, that's going to basically turn off that layer. We can see that it's affecting these shadows right here. So that's not something that we want. So one thing that we can do is just mask our sky so that it doesn't go down in the shadows. That'll also also help with blending it with these trees a little bit. It'll fix a lot of problems actually. So how do we mask something? Well, it's nice to mask something on the merge because the merge has one job. The merge's job is to put something over something else. This one is putting the sky over our original footage. 
okay? So we're gonna tell it to only do that inside of a mask. Our masks are up here, kind of under our transport controls. There are a bunch of different masks you can use. I'm gonna use the polygon mask, that's the third one over, and just drag this down here, and I'll take the output of the polygon mask and plug that into the blue input of this merge, okay? Now I can draw a shape, and we'll just kind of do something like this, and I'll make it big and wide at the top, like that. And now that sky is only going to be merged over inside of that mask. Well, this looks not great so far because we obviously have a mask here, but we can soften the mask if we just select this polygon. I can go over here to soft edge and I can push that up and that's gonna blend that together really nicely with our original footage actually. So we could probably even select these points like this and just move them up a little bit. So the more we move them up, the more we'll see just the original footage, okay? Maybe take this soft edge down a little bit. Yeah, something like that, okay? So now we have a little bit of a fade here, which you could probably notice when you turn this off and on, that there's a little bit of a fade, but you're never actually gonna notice that in real life. It still looks pretty good. Eh, maybe a little over here. Take that down, maybe soften this just a touch more, okay? So now when we turn this off and on, we don't have this affecting our shadows at all, right? So that fixed one of the problems. The other problem with this kind of stroke around our guy is because of our key. So if we go to our Delta key here, we can go up here to where it says view mode, and here where it says final result, we can select matte, and that's going to show us the matte that it's using. A matte is just a black and white image that controls the transparency of something. So basically anything that's white is gonna be totally opaque. Anything that's black is going to be totally transparent and gray is in between. So right now, the way this is keying, we're going to see some of the sky behind our guy and also in the bike and a bunch of other places. Anywhere where it's gray, we're going to see a little bit of sky through him. Y'all people don't believe me. If we go back to final result and I grab my sky merge again and I turn this off and on, you can see that it lightens and darkens his shirt. That means that we are blending the sky in and it's lightening things. It's like way too soft on the bike. There's all kinds of problems with this mat. So what we wanna do is make sure that our mat is really nice. So we can select Delta key here, go back to our mat here. And there are a lot of controls for the Delta key here. The one you really need to know about is under this third icon here, under mat, there's this threshold. And you can fix a lot of stuff just with the threshold, okay? So what we wanna do is make him pure white and the background pure black. So I can push this low threshold down, that's gonna make more things black. So I wanna push that up just a little. And I wanna take the high threshold down. As I pull that to the left, he becomes more white. And we gotta kinda of decide how much we care. We want most of him to be pure white. This is technically a problem right here where it's showing the sky. It's probably not something anybody's gonna notice or care about. So we're gonna kind of just say it's good enough for government work. And here where it says matte, let's go back to final result. And now, when we turn off and on our sky merge here, we zoom in, we don't have that big difference when we turn that sky off and on. Okay, it's a pretty good key. Now, there's also still the problem of these edges. One thing that we can do that's pretty easy is select this Delta key here, and there's this control under matte, which is erode and dilate. And what this does is it shrinks down that matte so that we don't have those edges. Now you wanna be really careful with this because it will get rid of details and make things look like terrible. But if you're really gentle with it, you can just push that in just a little bit and that will clean up your edges quite a bit, okay? So now we have our sky and we're getting a little bit better result here. Now, there are still some problems with the spokes and so we're gonna have to kind of decide how much we care about that. We can adjust the threshold a little bit and push that down and get a little bit more of those spokes and we can kind of play around with that, but it's always gonna be balanced between your main edges and your little details like this. So the question is, what's the most important to you? What's the most dead giveaway? And I think, you know, zoomed in here, yes, it's not super amazing, but since we're only gonna be looking at this zoomed out, for the most part, it's probably fine. Also, because he's moving around all the time, you're not gonna notice that some of those spokes are not really there, okay? So that's a pretty good start. The other thing with this Delta key here is that it tends to add a bunch of noise to your clip. And there are ways to get around it and mess with the settings and everything, but honestly, the very best thing to do is instead of using this Delta key here like this, we're gonna use a new node called a matte control. If we hit shift spacebar, M-A-T-T-E, we're gonna bring that up and we're gonna use this matte control to basically do the same key, but without the noise that the keyer adds to it, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the Delta keyer now that we have it pretty much locked in. We're gonna take our original footage, put that into the matte control, and we're gonna take our Delta keyer and plug that into the green input of the matte control, okay? So original footage goes into yellow, that's the background, and our key goes into the foreground. 
what this matte control is doing is taking this matte that we are making with the Delta Keyer, this black and white image, and it's cutting out our original footage with the black and white image in a way that's just a little bit cleaner than the Delta Keyer, okay? To get it to do that, all we have to do is select this matte control up here where it says matte combine. Let's just say combine alpha and then go down here to where it says post multiply image. Let's click that. So now we plug this into our merge and we go back to final result here. We have a very nice clean mat. We're using the transparency in this Delta Keyer as a mat to cut out our original footage. And we get a much, much cleaner result this way. Here we can kind of preview this before and after by clicking on and off the mat control. And there's still a few little problems. Again, one thing with visual effects is you do what you can get away with. These edges probably wouldn't pass for, you know, a super professional blue screen or green screen, but it's probably gonna work just fine for what we're doing. So now we're almost done. We have the guy jumping. Looks good, the sky's behind him. But we have this problem here where the camera moves and the sky doesn't, which is a dead giveaway that we replace the sky. So what do we do about that? Well, anytime that you want something to move with a moving camera, you have to track it and kind of apply that tracked motion to whatever you want to stick to the shot. So we can go back to our original footage here. Let's just click here in the blank space and hit shift space bar and we'll type P-L-A-N. That'll bring up our planar tracker. The planar tracker is a quick way to track a bunch of points and kind of average out their movement, which is great for things like this, like a sky replacement. We're gonna take the output of our original footage, plug that into the yellow input of planar tracker, and I'll bring this up in our first viewer by hitting one on the keyboard. And now we see our original footage before we've done anything to it. And I think what we wanna do is just select probably this stuff back here. We're looking to just draw a shape around elements that are high contrast so that it knows what we want to match the motion of. So we'll just do kind of a big section like this. And over here under the inspector controls for the planar tracker, we wanna change a couple things. First thing I'm gonna do is set our reference time. That's basically the time where we selected this shape. Under tracker, we can leave as point. Under motion type, instead of perspective, I think we'll just do translation, rotation, and scale. Basically at the top of this list, is the simplest way to track and the bottom is the most intense way to track. You generally want to pick as far up the list as you can. If something's just moving up and down, left and right, that's translation. If something's moving all directions and also rotating, we might do that. If you're also zooming while that's happening, we could do translation, rotation, and scale. So I think that's what I'll do because I feel like there's a little zoom to this and everything else is good. We're at our reference time at 45 frames and I'll just click this track to start button to track it backwards. And now I can hit go to go back to our original frame and then track forward, track to end like this. So now we've tracked the motion of our shot like this and we can take this motion and we can apply it to anything we want by clicking this create planar transform button. What that'll do when we click this is it's going to make a new node. And this is a transform node. And so anything that we run through this node is going to move in the same way that this part of the image is moving, which is perfect if we want our sky to move that way. So I'll take this sky, I'll take this planar transform and hold shift and drag that in between the sky and the merge like this. So when we grab it and wiggle it, it should wiggle around like that. And now let's see what we got. If we play this back, oh dang baby, the sky is moving along with our shot. It's not a dead giveaway anymore. It's looking pretty good. But there is a problem. We have this edge here. So what we actually wanna do is scale up the sky a little bit before we apply that motion. So we can just take the sky and I'll just hit shift space bar and type XF. That's a quick way to add a transform. You can also just drag it in here from the toolbar. Let's grab this transform and we'll just scale this up a little bit. So we'll just say size and we'll just scale that up. Nobody's gonna know that we scaled it up. And if it stays on screen the whole time, that's really all we need to do. Looks good to me. And now that I'm done tracking, I can get rid of this planar tracker because all of that tracking information is right here in the planar transform, okay? So now our original footage goes into the Delta keyer and the matte control. The matte control uses the key from the Delta keyer to cut out the parts that we want in our footage basically just keeping these parts right here. Then we're putting that over our sky, which is merged over our original footage. We have this original footage in the background so that anything that we aren't covering with our key and anything that our sky doesn't cover just looks natural. It's just the original footage, right? So we go original footage, sky, and then our keyed footage on top of that. And there we go, there's our replaced sky. Not too bad, right? If you wanna learn more about working in Fusion, I have a free course, the Fusion Survival Guide. Make sure to check that out. It'll teach you my top tips for working in Fusion effectively and efficiently and all of those other adverb words that are really good. I hope you had a good time. What do you want to learn to do in Fusion? Put your requests in the comments below and maybe I'll make a video on it. You never know. You just, you never know.